This is Andrew Peroff, Boxing Social in association with Vet Fred. And once again, it's a pleasure to, to be to be joined by Showtime Sean Porter, a former two-weight world champion. Uh, we were saying earlier, Sean, it doesn't, doesn't actually sound right saying that, but here we are. Yeah, no, yeah. And you're back, you're <laughs> reflecting on the split decision defeat to Errol Spence Jr. You're looking to return. But firstly, how are you doing now? Yeah, I, I thought I'd be much better. Uh, it's hard doing interviews with you over the phone because of the accent. I'm standing right here in front of you and I'm still struggling. <laughs> but other than that, everything is good, man. <laughs> it's good to hear. Obviously, I arranged it for your father, Kenny. He isn't here today and he's yeah. ill. How, how is Kenny? What's, what's yeah, up? He's a little sick right now, man. <laughs> doing, he's a, a lot of traveling lately. I've been trying to keep up, but I get, I get back home. He's just been gone, 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 gone. And I think he, uh, he ran his body a little bit and he's got a little flu right now. So he's dealing with that. Um, he's, the doctor told him to stay in bed five to seven days. I, I, we got to bet. I bet uh, two and a half days. So two and a half days he'll be out here running around again. I think you'll need to stay away from him because you don't want to catch anything yeah. yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. So even that, um, I went, uh, just wanted to check him out yesterday. He's like, make my soup, then get out of here. <laughs> so I made him some soup, uh, cut him up some chicken, all that good stuff, and, and uh, throw it in the pot. And then I just, I asked him, he's, I said, you want me to give you a call later? He says, just doing this gives me a headache. I said, I'll just text you then, you know. So I texted him last night, make sure he was all right. And I haven't called up with him yet this morning, but I'm sure he's doing all right. Do you fancy yourself as a bit of a cook, Sean? I do. I do. Most people don't even know this, and and here's the reason why. When I was young, I've I've been I've been in the in the kitchen my entire life with my mom and my grand, and even and even my dad. Uh, I, I I wanted to go to culinary art school, but me being a boxer, me being a football player, all that kind of stuff, growing up, I really did think that people would laugh at me if I went to culinary arts. So uh, I just do all my cooking at home and. And it's all self-taught now, you know, but it comes from, from the family. So I do enjoy cooking. Um, my, actually, I'm hosting Thanksgiving this year at my house again. So that's a big one. Me and my boy, we're going to fry turkey this year. So, <laughs> What would you say your best dish is? Uh, I really like to fry fish. Um, I've been on a little bit of a, a chicken kick lately. And, um, and I cook lunch for my son every day. So uh, it's... Uh, peanut butter and jelly is probably the specialty because that, that, that's the one that, that started started it all, you know what I mean? So that's probably the specialty. You just mentioned your son as well. How, how is fatherhood treating you? It's beautiful, man. Um, my son's a knucklehead. He is uh, very much everything that I am and his mom. So he is uh, quite a handful, but you know we, we, we're trying to pray with him every day, uh, get him to church as much as we can, and just you know train him up the way that God wants us to. Obviously, we've just touched on a few things away from boxing, but the reason I'm here is boxing. As I said to Larry, it's been about a month, month and a half since your bout with Errol Spence Jr., that split decision defeat. Time to reflect. I know we did a little video earlier where you kind of vented a little bit, but as you have had time to reflect on the decision and the defeat, what has been your thoughts? I'm better than him. <laughs> um, I think that in every, every facet, um, I think that um, it was a tremendous fight. <clears throat> it takes two. Uh, he is um, he's a great fighter, great, great, great athlete. Um, that night, I thought it was my night. Um, you know, no hard feelings that the judges didn't see it that way. But um, I'm definitely ready to, to move forward and take on another challenge. Uh, coming out of the ring, you know, back room and then, you know, it didn't take us. We probably might have got back to the hotel before we were saying we need to fight him again. Uh, not just to you know try to get back our belts, but just because that was such an exciting and and great night uh, for the world, and then you know collectively for for both teams. So we really want him again. Obviously, we know that uh, he's down and out for a little while. So um, I'm I'm thinking Pacquiao um, for the WBA or someone else for the WBC uh, or IBF if those if those belts are are going to be vacant. Before we do come on to other avenues, just to stick with the Spence fight, did he pose any threats? Did he do anything differently to what you expected? I, I'm God honest truth. I expected him to be a lot more aggressive than he was. I think that, uh, you know, the, the mindset that I had, the, the decision that I made for myself to come out and start fast and start strong and, and to uh, keep him off of me, I think that that worked 
uh, in terms of, you know, him not being able to pick up on my rhythm and my timing and, you know, do the things that he's used to doing to being comfortable in the ring. I think that for a lot of the fight, we kept him uncomfortable, which is what I wanted to do. But at the same time, I think it was a little surprise at, you know, how much uh, he how he fell into that. Uh, I think, you know, I, I expected um for the second worst, a little more resistance, but I'm not saying he didn't resist me, but I thought he would really try to impose him with his will no matter what, and I, I didn't really get that from him. So that was a little surprising. Uh, other than that, um, really, man, the fight kind of played out the way I thought it would. You received a lot of plaudits and a lot of praise for your own performance. I know it won't mean anything to you because the result didn't go your yeah, way, yeah, but yeah. if you was to reflect on that performance and compare it to all of your previous fights, how good a performance do you think it was? Do you think it was your best? Do you think it was up there? What are your thoughts? Funny thing, man. I think it was. It honestly was my my best performance. I felt that it needed to be in order for me to win the fight. And like you said, obviously we don't uh, we didn't get the decision. But you know, seeing how everyone responded to the fight itself, but also to me and you know so on and so forth, it's really hard to feel like I lost the lost you know lost the fight, but. In the sense that, you know, obviously I know I lost, but it just, you know, when you get so much praise, even in defeat, it's like, you know, the, def the defeat really doesn't matter, you know. So moving forward, the funny thing is that I feel like I could be better than I was that night. Um, really seeing uh, and knowing what I did that night, but, but understanding that I still have a few adjustments to make. And even with those small adjustments, I could be better than I was that night. I'm, I'm looking forward to that challenge. One thing I did want to ask as well is, on the night of the day after I saw a video Errol Spence put on his uh, Instagram story, the WBC had a belt ready with his name on it. What are your thoughts with regards to that? Uh, you know, I didn't see that post. I, I did hear about yeah. the post. You know, it's it's a part of the business. You know, you got to be ready for, for, for it all, you know. So, um, I, I was uh, ecstatic to get my belt. My belt came in the mail, you know. Uh, I think most fighters get their belts in the mail. Um, he was special enough to, to, to get it on that night, you know, so uh, congratulations getting your belt a little sooner than anybody else. And obviously, within the, the coming days of that, Errol Spence was in a car accident, yeah. uh, drink driving. Yeah. What was your initial reaction to that? I, you know, it's funny. Uh, well, not that it's funny, but I woke up and I woke up to like just messages, text messages, videos, all that kind of stuff. It was about three o'clock in the morning and I mean my heart was racing I just I like of course was like no way no way no way you know not thinking that the, the worst didn't happen you know so that really was it was a big relief to 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 learn that you know the worst didn't happen you know at this point I just I want to hear from the kid you know I don't I'm not I don't want to be nosy I just want to you know I want him to want to know that he's all right you know and being all right doesn't mean just being alive but you know are you at peace you know are you are you are you okay with you know the way things are going right now i know things are bad but you know look around man i mean there's there's homeless people out here there's people who can't feed themselves so on and so forth you know so you know everybody has their own uh vices and, and things that they have to defeat and um you know you guys just see us you know when we have a, a a big challenge in front of us on the night of a fight you know but even outside of that, we all have our own challenges and things that we have to live through and, 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 and be at peace with. So uh, I think more than anything, just to, to see a, see him and, you know, see him smile. You know, I think that that would mean a lot to me because I, I understand what it what it feels like to, to go through something and, you know, have to smile your way through it, you know. And so you, you guys know me, man. I'm, I'm, I am a Christian and I believe wholeheartedly in the Bible. And it says, the Bible says you have to smile through your trials. With the understanding that you know there's a blessing come behind coming just behind those those trials and those tribulations so i just wanted to be all right very well said sean um, moving forwards you did mention you'd like maybe pacquiao for wba belt yeah. maybe for ibf or wbc titles become vacant because of our whole situation and his recovery <coughs> what do you think the likelihood is for you next what have you got planned what have you spoken to your father about and your team you know, um, my dad and I, we, we just started talking just a little bit. We, we're not exactly sure what direction we're going to go yet. Um, we we both have understanding that we want to do something early spring, you know, March. Uh, moving in April, I really wouldn't rather, I'd rather not get in the ring any later than April. Uh, we definitely have um, some great things going on. Personally, um, I'm getting married uh, early next year. 
uh, outside of that, just trying to, um, you know, show that that night that I had with Errol Spence was special and uh, there's more to come. And the blessed part about that is for me, I don't mean just in the ring. You know, you see me doing the Inside PBC Boxing Show now on Fox, which airs twice a month. You guys don't miss it. Uh, and another things with TV and, you know, just trying to get different sponsors and endorsement deals and things like that. So just trying to get it cracking when it's not cracking in the ring, you know. The one thing that always amazes me is the desire and passion you show. Whenever I see you, whenever I talk to you, you've just always got that, that desire to prove that you're the best. Yeah. Despite the three defeats on your record, two in world title fights. How, how do you find yourself still being able to motivate yourself when you've got nothing left to prove effectively? I tell you what, man, I'm, I'm just extremely blessed. It seems like after a fight, it seems like there's just another challenge. There's something, something else that needs to be done. And, it's, you know, I'm blessed enough to be able to recognize that. But not only that, uh, I'm blessed enough to, to want to accept those challenges. You know, I don't think, you know, most people aren't like that, you know. So I don't know. It's uh, that that's the the excitement that I get is is understanding that there's a challenge there's somebody who's doubting me or there's you know someone who thinks that they're you know can beat me or you know just somebody like like Manny Pacquiao is a, is a prime example that I simply want to fight Manny because he is is great and I want to see how great I am you know I think that uh I was able to do that with Spence I was able to do it with Keith Thurman uh, Danny Garcia, all those guys are great, you know, and I think it would be great to to have a shot against against uh, Manny Pacquiao. You did just touch on there, uh, Danny Garcia. After your fight with Errol, Danny Garcia jumped in the ring, and it's kind of coming out that may well be the most likely fight: Errol Spence right. versus Danny Garcia, right. someone you previously defeated in right. Danny. What are your thoughts if, obviously, when uh, sorry when Errol is better? What are your thoughts with regards to if he was to face Danny Garcia? Uh, what, like, how do I see that fight going? What are your thoughts with it actually if it was to happen? Uh, uh, do I, are you asking me? Do I think it's gonna happen? No, do, do you think it's the right move, knowing that, for example, you beat oh, oh, Danny yeah. and then obviously? Yeah, yeah. It, it was weird that night because. I mean, everybody's been doing the math, and the math it w was the same, you know. Pacquiao against Thurman and, and Porter against Spence in the winner's fight. You know, we I at least thought it was like an unspoken tournament, you know. So um, it was weird to see uh, Danny Garcia get in the ring. Well, that part wasn't weird. I understand Danny is like, hey, I'm, I'm still here. Uh, give me a shot. But to see that uh, Arrow was like, okay, let's do it. I think maybe he was caught up in the moment, not, not recognizing that, hey, man, uh, you know, Pacquiao's still out there, you know, so, hey, they get it on, and I want Pacquiao. Keep saying you want Pacquiao. Just talk to you about that fight in your head. How exactly does it kind of play out? I really do think that uh, I have everything that it takes to beat Manny. Uh, I think I, uh, even in, in the fight with, with Errol, I was still able to learn a lot and um, <clears throat> and recognize a lot of things about myself. And I think, you know, moving forward, uh, somebody like Manny Pacquiao, I think I would be ready for for him. The other world champion we haven't even touched upon, Terence Crawford, WBO world title yeah. holder. What are your thoughts with regards to Terence and he's standing in the division? A lot of people kind of try and rank him in and amongst their pound for pound rankings. Do you see him up there as one of those contenders, or what are your thoughts on him? I do I mean um, I'm pound for pound, and I and I have uh, three losses now. You know so. I, I think for 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 uh, Terence, it doesn't matter who he's who he's beat or not beat. I think everybody's looking at uh, we got planes. I think everybody. Sure, fans coming in, right, Sean? Yeah, I think everybody's looking at uh, you know the the, the big uh, the big guys over here on um, Thurman, myself, Pacquiao, you know uh, Spence, Garcia, Garcia, both Garcias. Uh, and and uh, there's a little bit of a few other guys behind all of those that I named, and everyone's saying that you know Terence hasn't fought any of those guys, so he he can't be you know pound for pound, or he can't be the best in the division. He's got to fight those guys first. Um, he's got to figure it out. Uh, Top Rain's got to figure it out. So that's what I was about to say. It's a it's easy enough for us to say that he's got to do it, but with Terence being with top rank and Bob Arum, most of the other guys, you know, you, you yourself included, you're with Al Hyman and PBC. How difficult is it going to be to try and 
engineer a way to get Terence in amongst you guys? I honestly don't know. I don't know if it if it matters. Uh, I think it's. I don't know. I don't know what it what it what it takes. You know. Um, you know. I I don't know if if he's gonna. You know. Hypothetically, if he calls me out and I say, "All right, I'll fight you," uh, I don't know if if. Uh, you know, Bob Arum and, and 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 PBC are gonna you know allow that to happen. I don't know if Top Rank and PBC are gonna allow that to happen. I know that the, t even network-wise, there's a lot going on and you know a lot of things that are still being put into place. You know, this is just the first year for PBC with Fox. You know, so I, I know that Fox has plans with PBC and they don't want to you know change anything or disrupt anything, but. You know, I've already said it. You know, if, if Terrence wants to fight me and him and I get together and say, all right, we'll make it happen, then, then that'll probably be the fight you guys see. Another name I want to throw out there is Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor winning the World Boxing Super Series yeah. final against Regis Progre at yeah. super lightweight. He's got those ambitions to face Jose Ramirez in the undisputed fight. Let's say if that passes and he was to fight him, he was to be successful. He's got, well, he wants to move up to welterweight eventually. How do you think Josh would fair at welterweight i've seen josh work he's he's really good uh he's quick smart and uh he's fast and the best part about it is he's smart i've seen him work uh just in in training and uh i was very impressed when i saw him train and that was a couple of years ago so he's really come a long way since then i think that uh he's got the skills and um you know it's 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 really hard to say how someone would fare until they get in the ring and do it you know so Yes, he has all the intangibles to to be, uh, you know, one of the best fighters out there. Obviously, you know, taking on that that tournament and winning the tournament says a lot. Um, but it's it's one thing to have it and then you know go out there and use it. At this point, he's been able to do both, you know. But you know, it's not for me to say. Well, I think he can be, you know, he can beat this guy, that guy, you know, because I think that you know you guys saw with me and Thurn er, with me and Pac era, uh, wow, with me and Spence. <laughs> You guys saw that, um, you know, I was counted out and going to get knocked out and not going to be able to go the distance and lose and so on and so forth. And you saw something way different than 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 what was said, you know. So uh, I think, you know, we, we best off we learned a, a lesson from that and not say that uh, Josh is or is not ready for X, Y, Z. You know, just let him take on those challenges and see how he, how he fares. Just on his fight against Regis Prograde. Did before the fight, did you expect Josh to win, or was you maybe back in Regis? What was your thoughts? Uh, yeah, Amen. of course. Yeah, back before the fight, I'm back in Regis. You know, um, it's simple, <laughs> American yeah. against an English fighter. So, uh, but even aside from that, I'd seen uh, progress in actual fights. I hadn't seen Josh. I think before this fight, I'd seen, I saw, excuse me, saw one of Josh's fights. So I'd seen him train before, and I'd only seen one of his fights. So uh, getting in the ring again, you know, you say, well. You know who, who's been in the ring, who's got the experience, so on and so forth. So I really did think it was going to be Progress's night, and Josh he showed up. You know, and the best part about it is I've seen him do a lot of what he did that night in training. So I wasn't surprised. I, just, I was very proud for him and happy for him. Now, just to move away from yourself and what white division, and before I do let you go and have some food and yeah. have some downtime, yeah. just want to get your thoughts on a few other things in the boxing world. Starting off with this weekend, Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz. Um, your, your strength and conditioning coach, obviously, with the Luis Ortiz camp now. Yeah. Your thoughts on the fight, though, and the rematch? I, man, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it because, uh, you know, I have a, a friend, a, a good friendship with Deontay Wilder that goes way back to 2007. Um, to the, 2008, and uh, outside of that, seeing Luis Ortiz know his story, know where he comes from, seeing that you know he really is a, a underdog, and you know that's just a story not not just a story that I appreciate, but it's just how I am. You know, I'm, I understand that that warrior spirit and that that underdog mentality. So it's really hard for me to to root against the underdog. But I got the underdog getting in the ring with, with one of my, my great friends in boxing, you know. So it, I, as long as both guys are safe getting in and getting out of that ring, uh, I can't go wrong either way. Can I ask you how you see the fight playing out between players? Do you expect it to be similar to the first fight? I, or? I, it's simple. Uh, knockout is, is, is Deontay Wilder. Decision is uh, Luis Ortiz. I think uh, it's no secret that Luis Ortiz is, is a superior boxer. Um, and he came out here to Vegas not just to get ready for the fight, but uh, not not just because the fight was out here, but to to really get ready for the fight. He, and he linked up with with my coach Larry Wade, and um, you know Larry Larry can do the dang thing, you know. So uh, I think that you know um, Luis was able to come here, 
lose some weight, get stronger, get fitter. And uh, I'm wondering how that's gonna gonna show up in the ring, you know. So I'm looking forward to it. And obviously, there was always that talk of the Wilder Fury rematch taking place in February next year. Yeah. Let's just say if Deontay was successful, Wilder Fury was to happen. What are your thoughts on the rematch? Well, I think that's the rematch everybody wants to see. I think we want we'd rather see that rematch than see this rematch here. Uh, I would love to see Deontay Wilder. Well, first we need to see what happens in just a few nights. I think. What we see in a few nights, Deontay wins, uh, we'll, we'll get a better idea of what's going to happen in the fight with, with Tyson Fury. There's got to be better, there has to be better boxing from Deontay Wilder on Saturday night. Um, the jab now has to, it, it can't just work, but it's got to also be effective. So I, w I would love to see a, a better effective jab uh, from, from, um, from Deontay Wilder, as well as uh, some, some cleaner boxing, cleaner punches. And, uh, uh, I think, you know, he wins his fight. Um, we'll, we'll be in for a great rematch between him and Tyson Fury. And another rematch that's taking place on December 7th in Saudi Arabia. Andrew Ruiz Jr. versus Anthony Joshua again. Your thoughts on that one, Sean? That's going to be a great fight. Uh, I'm looking forward to the rematch. Of course, I'm, I'm rooting for Andy Ruiz. Uh, I was rooting for him before he got in the ring that night. I didn't know he could do what he did. Um, I'm looking forward to him showing up and doing it again. He doesn't that that punch doesn't connect um, the way it does in the first fight, and I think we're still in for a great, exciting fight. Um, Joshua likes to use his reach. He likes to line up his big right hand, and uh, Andy likes to work. He's a worker in the ring, you know. So especially in the heavyweight division, you gotta appreciate that. So I, I think it's gonna be a great fight. You said earlier people would rather see the Walder Fury rematch as opposed to Walder Ortiz. With no disrespect to that rematch. Of course, yeah. But in your opinion, which one would be bigger for the heavyweight division? Ruiz Joshua 2 or Walder Fury 2? I think we have to see the rematches. After we see the rematches, we can say. I think on paper, both fights are um, the epitome of, of greatness. They are, um, when you use the word, when you use words like uh, exciting, and spectacular and unbelievable. I think both of those fights on paper have the makings to be just that as rematches. So I think both fights are going to be great and uh, we can judge which one was greater after the fight, but I don't think it's, I don't think we could do that before the fights happen. Well, Showtime Sean Paul, I have kept you for long enough. Before I let you shoot off, final word to yourself, what would you like to say to everybody? God bless you guys. Um, look forward to getting back in the ring next year. Uh, something big and great and um, Honestly, man, to this point, I've had the pleasure of doing what I do, uh, not only in the ring, but when you guys put microphones in front of me, what I've been doing now with Fox has all been great. Uh, continue to support boxing, continue to support box P PBC on Fox. Uh, there's fights on FS1, FS2, uh, of course, Fox. And uh, this fight right here, pay-per-view, baby. We got Luis Ortiz versus Tyson, or excuse me, Luis Ortiz versus Deontay Wilder in the rematch. And uh, I think it's going to be a great fight. I think this is going to be a nail biter. This one had me on my seat the first time. Uh, I'll be sitting off of the ring for this one, but I expect to be standing up for this one. So uh, God bless you guys. Check it out. Order it. Fox Pay-Per-View Ortiz um, versus uh, Wilder 2 uh, Saturday night. God bless you guys. Well, Sean Paul, I, I appreciate lot, your time. It's a lot of names. <laughs> it I'm trying to keep it clean, but it's a lot of names. I'm like Ortiz and Fury, da da da. So, God bless you guys. Look out for that fight. Please don't miss it. This Saturday night, Wilder versus Ortiz too. Sean Paul, uh, thanks for being himself, and uh, hopefully we'll see you at your wedding next yeah. year. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. God bless. Cheers, Sean. Thank you. <laughs>